So if I have a uh, exponential function like that, uh, let's just worry, let's not worry about the starting value. Let's say that c equals one. So then that's this value here, the starting value. So my c in the more generic, uh, this is the number one. So I get that equation up top, right? So if that's the case, then what um, will we end up, I'm, basically I'm removing uh, a one little piece of complexity regarding the starting value. It's not super difficult, but, and so we can simply look at what happens with A. A simply must be greater than zero, okay? But A cannot equal one. Again, the reason why A cannot equal one is because if we have Y equals one to the X, no matter the value I put in for X, so X being all real numbers, right? I should say it should be an element of all the real numbers. Um, then this just looks like Y, this just looks like Y equals one, just a line at Y equals one, a horizontal line. So that's why A doesn't equal one when we're defining an exponential function. Can we have A equal to one? Yes, it's just not interesting and it isn't defined as an exponential function. Now, what if um, A is between, if, if A is greater than one, then we have exponential growth. Why is that? Well, because I have y equals, let's say, 7. And if x equals 1, I get y equals 7. If x equals 2, I get y equals 49. If I, get, if I have x equals 3, I get whatever that is, another 7 times 49, OK? So x continues to increase. And so we get something that looks like this. All right, where this point is 0, 1. Because if I put 0 in for x, I'm going to get zero, 7 to the 0, which means I get 1. So I still have this going on, right? So, But every, every value for x going forward, I increase that value, and I increase it exponentially because it's repetitive multiplication. So the student specifically asked for, what the heck, I'm, I'm having trouble with this y equals a to the x, but we're talking about when x is less than 1 and greater than 0. Well, that's going to be exponential decay. Why is that? Well, because if I have, let's say, y equals 1 half, which I have graphed over here, right, in this red graph, y equals 1. I'm sorry, y equals 1 half to the x. Then when I put in 1, let's make a little table here. When x is equal to 0, of course, I get 1. So that's this point right here. And note that it's exponential decay. And it gets really close to 0 here. And so let's zoom in a little bit. I want to see what's going on right in here. OK? So it's still that big curve that was way up here, coming down here, and then getting close to x, uh, y equals 0 to the x-axis, right? I did some editing because I started going down a path that was just going to be crazy. Uh, not fun for anybody, including myself. So let's just look at the integers. If I put 0 in for, one, for x, I get 1 half to the 0, which is 1. That's this point right here. right? That's a little bit off. There we go. OK? Now, if I put in 1 for x, I get 1 half raised to the 1, which of course is 1 half. So that's this point. Let me scooch it just a little. Right there. 1, 1, comma, 1 half, right? 1, comma, 1 half. So we get 1, comma, 1 half, just like I told you. Now, if I go y equals 1 half, squared, why am I writing it over there? I go y equals 1 half to the 2. So x equals 2, so 2 is in here. So that's 1 half squared, which is 1 half times 1 half, which is 1 quarter. So I get the point 2 comma 1 quarter. That's this point, 2 comma 1 quarter. Okay. 
So that's how I get exponential decay because every time I multiply the previous number by one half, because that's what's happening, right? If I, if I look at when x is equal to one, look at, let's look at it sideways. If I say x and this is y, this is one, this is zero. I'm sorry. If this is zero, this is one. If this is one, this becomes one half, assuming that y equals one half x to the x. And if I put two in here, yes, of course it's one half squared, but you can also think of it this way. Take the previous number. Let's do this in a different color. Take the previous number and then multiply it times this second one half. Okay? So we get a quarter. Now, when I put three in there, take the previous number, which was one quarter, and multiply it by one half again. And that becomes one eighth. And so this is how we can think about this as I'm taking one half of the previous number, taking half of the previous number, taking half of the previous number. So here I am, I take half of the previous number. The previous number is one, half of that's now half. Take the previous number, which is a half, and multiply it times one half again, and that's how I get a quarter. If I take the previous number, which was one quarter, and take half of that, or keep half of it, I get to one eighth. If I multiply it by another half, I take one eighth, and I'm gonna keep half of that, which is one sixteenth. By the way, 0 0.0625 is one sixteenth, and so on and so on. So that's how I get ever closer, ever closer. So in um, some homework problems on, uh, for instance, my open math or Hawks or whatever, they ask you to graph. Well, you're not going to be able to graph uh, beyond the one half mark. Okay, so let's look at that specifically. Uh, but I want one that has a base that's uh, rational. So I think that might be down this way more a little bit. There we go. So first of all, what does this one third do? Well, it creates this situation where um, I'm trying to graph this. Hopefully I recognize that this is gonna be ex exponential decay. So for one third, it's gonna look something like this. This negative sign actually ref reflects it about the y-axis because if I graph this without the negative sign, it'll look like this, right? I'll do one of these a little, it'll look like, one. it'll look like this, right? Okay? So it's gonna look like that, but then all of these positive y values, which this is outputting a y value, right? When I do all this math, it's gonna be y equals this number. But all of these values will be negative. So the number that was up here will actually be down here. The number that's there will end up over here. So I end up getting this thing, okay? And I'll get something that's curved like that. Now, specifically, how do we, how do we choose numbers that will allow us to graph this? Well, if I put one in for x, I'll get negative two, right? Up here is the exponent, I'll get negative two. So let's, let's do that. So specifically to this example, if I have f of x equals negative one third to the x minus three. And if I put in x equals one, right? I'm gonna get f of x, I'm sorry, x equals one. I'm gonna put f of x here and I'm gonna get negative one-third, if I put one in for x, this is going to be negative two. But remember, what does this negative two end up doing for us? This ends up inverting this thing, not the negative sign. So the negative sign's up front. It inverts our base, so this becomes three squared. Okay? Which means I get negative nine. So at x equals one, I get negative nine. And that's the key to this. Why is it not allowing me to grasp? One, negative nine, clear all, clear all, one, negative nine. So I got one point there, okay? Now, if I put two in there, if I put two into my function for x, I get negative one-third to the two minus three, which is negative one-third to the negative one, which means I get negative, this means inverted, I get three. 
So I get at x equals 2, I get y equals negative 3. So I got that going on. And so I'll sub submit, and we should be gold, right? I get the green box. Now, let's try another one. Let's actually try to find, find the one that doesn't have the negative number. It's going to be this one, probably. Nope. 6 and 7. There we go. So here's 1 fifth x to the x plus 5. So f of x equals 1 fifth, 1 fifth to the x plus 5. Okay? So let's graph that. If I put in a value for, let's not choose those numbers that I chose before. Let's choose uh, 7, let's say. 7 for x. So my f of x is going to be 1 fifth to the 7 plus 5. So that's going to be 1 fifth to the second, which is 1 25th. But here's the issue. If I go to x equals 7 and try to plot 1 25th, this program's not going to let me. It's either going to let me plot at the integers, right? It's not letting me plot even at the half, half a value for y. So there's no way I can plot 1 25th, right? So let's clear. So I have to be strategic or tactical, depending on how big the scope is. Those words have different meanings. Um, the, what, the x value that I choose, what I want to come out, and so that's having some, some sense. If I wanted to, tr to get y to equal 1, I need this, the exponent, to be what? Well, I need it to be 0, correct? If I put 5 in for x, 5 plus, I'm sorry, negative 5 for x, I put negative 5 in there, I get negative 5 plus 5, which is 0, 1 fifth to the 0, just like any other value raised to the 0 is equal to 1. So I can plot that point, negative 5, 0. Boom. Now, if I want this to be 1 fifth, I would choose 6, because 6, I'm sorry, negative 6. Negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1, but that starts to become it starts to become painful if I, I, I don't want a fraction, right? So how do I make this not a fraction? Well, how do I make it not a fraction? Always makes, make it so this exponent, what I just said was kind of backwards, so ignore what I just said. I want to make this exponent a negative number. I want to make this exponent a negative number. Why? Because if I have some negative exponent on here, whatever that is, this negative sign inverts this. So let's say I want it to be I want my y value to be um, 5. That means prior to, that means I want this exponent, I want my exponent on 1 fifth to be negative 1, right? Because that's going to invert that. So if I want it to be 1 fifth, I need to make sure my exponent is negative 1. Well, how do I make x plus 5 equal to negative 1? I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. I get x equals negative 6. So at x equals negative 6, my y value is going to be 5. You see how I'm working that backwards so I can get a point that actually helps me to graph this? So at negative 6, I'm going to have a y value that is 5. So I get that. And for some reason, it wants me to plot it from left to right. So I'm going to clear all, plot this first, and plot that. OK. Six. I don't understand what's going on here. What the hell? No, oh, negative five equals one. Oh, that's why, because this is stupid. On it's, I didn't plot it correctly. I put it at zero. Oh, I have to do all that over again. Shit. That's okay. Um, okay. Okay, so now I, I just found this one, right? And so let's take a look at that. f of x equals 1 fifth to the x plus 5. So at x, f of x, if I put 0 in for x, I'm going to get 1 fifth to the fifth to the parentheses no I don't need the parentheses to the fifth right one fifth to the fifth and I get 3.2 times 10 to the e 10 to the negative fourth 
So that's some decimal value, right? Zero, zero, zero to the fourth. Three, two, probably more. Three, two, five is probably right. I don't know. Okay? So I can't graph that. Watch, I can't graph it. If I try to graph this at x equals five, y equals some small fractional number, it's not going to let me. Either it lets me plot it at one or zero, meaning it has to be an integer, right? It's not even let me do a half. So that's, it's not doable. I cannot do this. So I have to choose a number such that this turns out to be an integer, all right? I need this to be an integer, 7, 5, 15, 27. Actually, I can't do that. It has to be between negative 10 and 10, okay? So I need this to be an integer. So, so let's possibly choose an easy one, maybe the easiest one. If I want one-fifth to turn into an integer, I want to turn that into an integer, let's say one. Well, the e this is probably the easiest one. One-fifth to the x plus five, I want that to equal one, right? Which means this, the exponent itself, must be equal to what? It must be equal to zero. So this is what algebra is all about. I have this expression that I need to turn out to be zero. Well, that means that I need x plus five to actually equal zero. x plus five must equal zero. So x plus five must equal zero. This must be true. x plus five must equal zero. So I just need to solve this equation to figure out the value for x, then I need to substitute in there. No, you don't have to do all this. You could probably sort it out on your own, but x must equal negative five. So now that I know that x must be equal negative five, that means my x value that I'm gonna substitute into this is negative five. What comes out is my y value. Well, we already calculated, but we can do it again. One fifth to the zero, well, that equals one. So I get the point negative five comma one. So that's one point. We'll go into, the, into mom in a second. Now I want another point that has an integer for y. It's not gonna be zero, that, I'm just telling you that whatever's in here, right here, whatever's right there, whatever one of my y value is, I need it to be an integer, recall? So I could say two, but how am I gonna turn one fifth, oops, how am I gonna change one fifth to the x plus five into two? Well, that's problematic. The next simpler ver uh, value that we can find is if I can make this thing into a five, well, recall that this inverted would be five. So I have to make this equal to negative one. So I have to make it so that x plus five is equal to negative one. How do I do that? Well, let's subtract five from both sides and we'll discover that if I substitute x equals negative six in for this x, I'll get negative one. So x equals negative six will give me y equals negative one. It'll give me y equals negative one. So one fifth to the negative six plus five equals one fifth to the negative one, which is equal to five. So I get the point negative six comma five. Now if I take those two points over to the problem in mom, I can plot negative six comma five and negative five comma one. And that should be it. Look at the green box and we'll get 100% for that question. Hopefully that was helpful. Bye.